Hey guys, what's up? Isaac to Tron here from One Half Gazette, here with another defensive video. And uh, Town Hall 10 has really become a three star game recently with bowlers, with Falks, uh, just with all the new offensive buffs, uh, really ever since Falks got powerful. Um, and at this point, we're, you know, it's kind of becoming a little bit what the old Town Hall 9 was, not quite as much. It's still much harder to three star a Town Hall. 10 than it ever was to three star a town hall nine but um it's becoming something that in order to be one of the top clans you have to be able to three star uh, quite a few of the enemy town hall tens if not all of them in some wars so anyway uh obviously dip attacks uh when you have the town hall 11s come down to three star the town hall tens that complicates things and sometimes there's nothing you can do against it especially if you, you're not a max town hall 10 um but as far as town hall 10 be town hall 10 goes there is quite a few more uh, things you can do to prevent your base from getting three starred, or at least make it a lot harder. So anyway, uh, my base is not maxed, but this goes for most Town Hall 10 uh, levels, whether it's a new Town Hall 10 or a max Town Hall 10 or something in between. Uh, but as long as you have pretty much all the new buildings, uh, this applies to you, and uh, this is some good uh, tips. But anyway, in this video, we're talking about uh, how as a Town Hall 10, the basic stuff you want to do. And I make live base build videos, make sure to check those out. Uh, but I really want to have one comprehensive video that just covers all the uh, different parts of a base and just kind of briefly go through each one. So this is uh, the basics for Town Hall 10 of an anti three star war base. So let's get into it. Um, and the first thing when you're talking about building a base is to identify what's called the meta or what's being used right now that's really powerful on the attacking side and that would be Valks and Bowlers pretty much. You're not seeing a whole lot of air. We'll talk a little bit about air but uh, with like Laloon and stuff but for the most part 90% uh, of what you're doing is to defend against those two ground attacks and uh, that kind of goes with the first thing where you see the base has really nothing too valuable in the core. Um, all this stuff's gonna pop up but it's fine. Uh, nothing too valuable in the core here. No defensive buildings besides the air sweepers. But uh, it's good to put air supers in the core because um, they're basically a nothing building when you're talking Valks or Bowlers. But in case they do decide to use an air attack, this can throw them off. Plus, it's good for defending against like a queen charge if they try to enter the base with your queen. And we'll talk a little bit more about how it defends the Infernos in a moment. But um, the Archer Queen, a good thing to put in here because she can draw the aggro of troops. So if they're attacking an Inferno Tower, they can actually go past it and ignore the Inferno Tower if she aggroes a bunch of Alks or Bowlers or something. And then the CC obviously uh, cannot be lured out. That's always a good thing to do. I mean, some people don't do it as much, but um, actually we'll move this over one to even defend that Archer Tower. But it's something that's a good idea to do, and uh, why not, you know? What else are you going to put in your core? Because uh, with these kind of, I don't want to call them spam attacks because that has kind of a bad uh, connotation with it, but with these kind of overpowering attacks like Valks or Bowlers where you're using a lot of one troop, the idea is that you kind of steamroll through a base very quickly and try to kind of just get all of it at once. So by not having anything in the middle, that kind of segments your base and makes it harder to kind of just roll over it in one big push. Also keep in mind that it can't be jumped or earthquaked over. So they're gonna to have to either go through the wall or invest multiple uh, jump spells to get past like from that expo to this expo or from that inferno to that inferno. So keep that in mind uh, as we go through this. So anyway, that's that. Uh, as far as Infernos go, that's probably the next thing that stands out to you and the most important defensive building at Town Hall 10. Uh, these are kind of what you could call anti-bowler Inferno placements because the bowler can only throw over one... Uh, it's like a, a wizard. or Yeah, think of it as a wizard. It can only, uh, with a wall, it can only reach over one empty tile before it uh, has to be able to touch the building and I'm, I'm doing a bad job explaining this but if the inferno was here it could hit it if it's here it can't you have this little two tile moat all around the inferno between the inferno and the wall and what that does is it makes it so the boulder can't target it unless it enters that compartment so uh that's a good thing to do and notice how nothing else besides the skelly traps which we'll talk about later nothing else besides those are in the compartment with the inferno and that's trying to kind of spread out their spells because uh, the Inferno is a difficult building to take out and they might have to invest a few spells to do it, which is why you want to spread everything else out 
because uh, you don't want to let them get too much value for their spells. If you put your Teslas in there too, uh, that's just adding to the value that they'll get um, by investing in that area. Whereas uh, if you have this compartment, which has a ton of traps in it and stuff in defensive buildings, that takes quite a few spells uh, to get through. And you probably need a heal spell uh, with all the giant bombs and stuff. So you're making them spread out their spells. And they're not going to have enough spells to cover their whole base because you're uh, keeping the infernos in one spot and some very high value areas in a separate place. Um, so that kind of limits how they can use their spells and makes it difficult on the attackers. So that's kind of that for the Inferno. Um, just that empty uh, compartment, you don't have to do this. You can, and some people put their giant bombs next to the Inferno because they know that uh, an attacker has to go at the Infernos eventually. So if you can have some giant bombs to try to destroy Valks or Bowlers, that can sometimes work. Um, but on this base, I didn't do it. It's a possibility though. So just keep that in mind, like a double giant bomb set next to your Inferno to take out like bowlers or something. So uh, some bases have that. But anyway, uh, moving along past the Infernos kind of, and I shouldn't have to say this, but keep them on multi-target. Uh, no reason to have a single Inferno at this point in Town Hall 10. Um, so yeah, that should be pretty obvious. But anyway, um, the next thing I wanna talk about is how your base is uh, set up as it relates to Queen Walks. Because Queen Walks are something that you're gonna see in probably the majority of Town Hall 10 attacks, especially three-star attempts. Um, so I always put my uh, expos on ground. It's a good habit to get into because air, like I said, is a very, very limited threat. It's really not something to be worried about. So that extra range means a lot, mainly for, um, uh, excuse me, defending against Queen Walks because uh, that extra range can cover more along the base and when I say anti-queen walk, before we get into the details, it's making them invest rages as soon as possible and as much as possible. Make them have to pay to keep their queen up. Um, it doesn't mean they can't do it. It doesn't mean they can't get value. But make them have to invest, you know, two rages to do a successful walk. That's the goal there. Because that way they have much less spells for your uh, infernos, especially if they can't take out an inferno with the queen walk, which they shouldn't be able to. Uh, much less. Uh, it's it's a lot harder to three star the base when you only have a few spells, especially for troops like Valks or even Bowlers that require uh, quite a few spells. Um, but one thing I might have skipped over is uh, for the air sweepers, um, a queen walk could potentially try to enter the base and take out your inferno. They could maybe freeze your inferno or just pop the ability because the infernos are very exposed in this base. If you break a queen into this compartment or into this compartment. Uh, they can target that Inferno somewhat quickly, and the high HP buildings do help, but um, the Queen can take that out while she's out of range of the Inferno, so that's something to be a little bit concerned about, which is why the Air Sweepers help, and the Skelly Traps help, because the Skellies will pop up um, as soon as she gets close to that Inferno, so in case they try to enter from that side, uh, or this side, um, there's that little speed bump, and that can distract her long enough, especially if they pop the ability, she has to take out each Skelly one by one, and uh, that can take a toll on the queen, um, and this pushes back the healers. So it makes it hard to try to do a queen walk and actually take out an inferno tower, which is rare because the inferno blocks the heal, but it has been done. So uh, don't make it easy. Also, the point defense all around here, the expos, all that stuff helps because um, you want to make sure that she can't just kind of sit there and take out your inferno without taking much damage. So anyway, a uh, little uh, digression there, but uh, getting back to the main queen walk things, these two expos in this part of the base basically make it very difficult to queen walk, plus this archer tower, because these three buildings are all out of range from the queen. And even if she enters into this first compartment, uh, these two buildings, the two expos are still out of range. So you want to keep that in mind, is keeping buildings out of range of the queen, especially point defense like expos and archer towers, uh, because they do the most damage. And uh, that's what you want the queen to not be able to target, but you want them to target the queen. So it's very hard to do a queen walk on this side because you have all this point defense and uh, she's not going to be able to reach it. Um, over here, the Inferno, when it can reach outside the base, that's actually huge because it helps defend against a uh, queen walk that just walks around this side of the base because there's going to be that moment where she gets no heal. Um, and when there's point defense also, you have the Expo, Archer Tower, Cannon, the Tesla, all that stuff in there also helps. So it makes it difficult to uh, do a queen walk if she's going to run into an Inferno Tower. Um, up top, um, one thing for the king, 
is see you kind of where you're weak on the queen walk, where they could potentially do one, and put your king there, because he's a good speed bump for a queen walk. They have to invest a spell usually, or, or pop the ability, which is, it's worth it for your king if you make them do that. So if they, you know, enter into this compartment along like this, they have to deal with the king too. That's an extra speed bump in the way. Um, so this is really an unfriendly compartment. It has the cannon, uh, the expo, which can't be taken out even if the queen enters this compartment. And if she walks around, the expo still targets her, plus these two archer towers, which really can't be reached um, from the outside of the base like this. Uh, these two can target her. So there's a lot of point defense that's going to be on her. And like I said, the main thing is make them invest spells to keep their queen up. You don't want them to have a queen walk where they can not use any rages or even one rage isn't ideal. You want to make them invest two spells or more. Um, I'm talking rage spells, obviously, uh, to keep their queen up because <clears throat> a cheap queen walk will not go well for you. Even if they don't get that much value, uh, yeah, if they can do it with like no spells, that's not going to be very good for you, even if they only get a few defenses. And then up on this side of the base, we have the Inferno, which can target on the outside. Um, not a whole lot besides that. And you can argue the king maybe should be slid over here. Uh, so possibly, but uh, you also have this Archer Tower and uh, the three-point defense there, the cannon. So maybe not the best defended on that side, but it's hard to cover the entire base. Uh, I guess you could slide the Expo over or something. But anyway, that's that for the uh, Queen Walk. Pretty big part of your base. Um, is something you want to look out for is make sure your base is not easy to do a queen walk on because uh, that's pretty important for your uh, ability to defend a base. So moving along, uh, I want to talk a little bit about Teslas. So for Teslas, uh, you want to keep them away from the center of your base because a lot of times people will try to throw them in the middle here or by the infernos or try to stack them in like a group of four Teslas or something. That's not a good idea to do because in uh, Bowler attacks or Valk attacks, where they're just trying to run through your base as quickly as possible, uh, the Teslas will get like three shots off, then they'll go down. There'll just be another defense uh, defensive building that goes down in the heat of battle. Uh, you don't want them to just uh, basically get run over along with the rest of your buildings. Because when you keep them to the outside, um, okay, like if, if they'll attack from one side, they'll get one Tesla really easily, but the other three... Uh, they're not going to be able to get take out as easily because everything will die down by the time they get out to this area. If they try to send in some balloons or something, the Teslas are great to defend against balloons and uh, notice how these air bombs are by them. So uh, it really, by spreading this out, it's another way to decentralize your base, prevent against kind of the spam type attacks where they try to uh, get through your base as fast as possible and try to get it all in kind of like one big push by keeping your, you know, probably your most valuable point defense as far as how much damage it does. Maybe the Expo is, but pretty pretty valuable uh, amount of damage coming from that Tesla. By keeping that to the outside, uh, they might get caught up on a wall right here. Uh, it's making it so it's more valuable because if you keep them all in the core, they really will just kind of go down uh, in the in like one Valk swing under Rage. So there's no point uh, having them just kind of be run over in the core. Take them to the outside of your base. Put them kind of like one on each corner. You can double them up if you want, but uh, I like doing it this way because typically they attack from one side. So if they come from here, they get this one Tesla easily. But um, they have to deal with these if they send in hogs or balloons or or anything. And you can move them back one tile. But typically right on the outside here. And even if they, uh, even on the side they come from, they're not going to be expecting that. It's extra damage to the golem they drop, to the king, whatever they used to tank initially. That's just more damage. Um, so... And the, the core is the worst place because the attack's already going, everything's moving through. You want to get them at the beginning or the end of their attack because that's when they're moving the slowest with their troops and it, the Tesla will get the most value. So anyway, that's that for Teslas. Um, as far as air defenses go, real quick, put them. don't put them too central in your base because a lot of your, what your air defense does is, is it defends against queen walks. So if a queen's cutting the corner or if she's going the wrong way, if they make some mistake with their queen, the healers can get shot down. So you want to uh, keep that, the air defenses, probably uh, within like the compartment next to the outer compartment. Um, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about compartment structure in a moment. But uh, by doing this, keeping them to the outside, there's a better chance that the healers will get shot down. It just makes another factor they have to keep in mind during their queen walk, makes it harder to plan one. 
So that's a good idea to do, but don't make it too far to the outside. Um, there is the possibility they might use a lot of Luna attack, so don't make it so they can queen walk one of your air defenses. Plus, if they can queen walk an air defense, uh, it's no longer a threat for the healers because the queen will shoot it down uh, before the healers can uh, get in range of it. So don't have it be too easy, but have it be kind of towards the outside. And as far as the air traps go, I just put one black bomb on each of these air defenses. Just play it straight up, and uh, typically, because La Loon's not really working at Town Hall 10 right now, you shouldn't have to worry about it. Don't be too sneaky with it. Just put one on each and then two on the one you think they might try to come at if they bring some lava hounds. Um, and then I like to put these red bombs by like these Teslas or kind of uh, towards the outside of the base, catch a few balloons. A lot of times in these bases that are really spread out, there's buildings that aren't even covered by the air defenses. And if that, that's the case, like maybe this cannon, uh, you want to have this guarding it. So if they try to use like back end balloons or something, uh, that's more damage that will help take out the balloon along with the Tesla. So um, that's how I put my air traps. Not a huge deal. Um, briefly, again, talk about compartments because I brought that up. So besides that empty core that they can't jump over with one jump and then the, the uh, Inferno compartments, I like having these like high value uh, kind of Valk boiler killer compartments where you have like these giant bombs stacked up because a double giant bomb set, I believe, kills a bowler. So uh, if there's a big group moving through, even if they're being healed, uh, if they trigger those at the same time, they are finished. So that's a good thing to have there. Sometimes a wizard tower nearby uh, to get that splash damage on them. And uh, same thing in this compartment. These could be a little closer, these two giant bombs, um, but that's not how this base was set up, unfortunately. So uh, two double giant bomb sets, not like the typical hog killing ones, just between defenses um, in some, or not even between defenses, just somewhere in these compartments away from the Infernos or near the Infernos, depending on how you want to gamble with your base. It's all a game of odds of how the attacker is going to attack it. No way to know. But make these compartments big enough that they're hard to funnel through. Don't make it so they can easily kind of go through, jump here, jump here, and be on to the next one. Make them wide enough that they have to uh, be worried their Valks might go crazy on them. Uh, like this is, look at the spring traps, by the way. The spring traps is kind of between defenses, between buildings. Um, they're going to, and if you have them upgraded, they can get two Valks potentially. So give yourself the opportunity. Some people put them on the outside for hogs. I've kind of stopped that because people have just been using a lot of bowlers or a lot of Valks. I haven't seen many hogs, to be honest, especially if you're a really uh, max or near max Town Hall 10. People are not going to use hogs on you typically. So keep those spring traps towards the middle of your base and try to get some Valks potentially, um, especially for the higher level Town Hall 10s. So that's that. And then on the outside, we have these really long skinny compartments that are hard to funnel Valks through. So don't make it like a small compartment because it's easy for the Valks to go through for them to take whatever jump or quake or whatever is there for them. But if you have them spread out, the Valks could just run like along this little landing uh, like this or over here or just wherever in any of these compartments. But don't have the walls uh, cutting these off because it makes it way easier to funnel Valks into the next layer of the base. Keep these kind of skinny compartments on the outside uh, they'll make it more of a headache to funnel valves or boulders for that matter into a base. It's just another uh, thing they have to think about makes planning harder. So keep that in mind when you're de designing your base. I think I've talked about most of it. A um, few, like two things left. Um, as far as buildings touching, valves are still being used. Boulders might be a little more powerful, but don't give them any free touching buildings, especially expos, archer towers, this, these high value buildings, uh, cannons even. Teslas, and you can see you kind of have to have the Tesla touching or else there's a hole in your base. Um, so not much you can do about that. But where it matters, uh, these three not touching. The air defense can touch because it's not doing anything to ground troops anyway. Uh, it's like another trash building when it comes to Valks. And the King Pad, the Wizard Tower doesn't matter that much. But where it matters, you have the Expo um, not touching anything there. And then obviously the Infernos. And it's a bonus to have your core like this because um, the Valks basically do double damage when two buildings are touching because they're damaging both buildings at the same time. Where you want buildings touching is kind of in the corners of these compartments because it'll attract the Valks. So if they send in Valks right here and they want them to kind of go through like that, uh, the Valks will instead go over and target these two buildings because they're touching, which attracts Valks. Same with like up here, um, over here. These are all Valk magnets and they will really screw up an attack 
if the attacker doesn't like funnel those and that takes an investment of troops. So that's a bonus for your base. Um, last thing is the CC, what you have in your CC comp. Um, like I said, it preferably make it so it can't be lured out. Um, don't give them the option of luring it, even if they wouldn't anyway. Don't give them the option. It's just something that, that uh, takes away their options, makes it harder to attack your base. Um, but as far as what's in your CC, I've been doing the Golem Balloon a little bit. Um, that's one thing you can do, but I've also been trying uh, different stuff. Uh, one thing that people use is like a baby dragon and make sure not to use any other air troops. Don't use even minions or anything because the baby dragons only gets the times two damage if there's no other air troops near it. So one baby dragon, then like a giant, a Valk, some wizards, even two Valks, just a combination of baby dragons, Valks, uh, wizards, or I should say one baby dragon, a number of Valks, a number of wizards, minions, um, stuff like that, that or not minions, sorry. For a, You can use a minion CC, but don't have a baby dragon in it. If you do have a baby dragon, don't use any other air troops. Just use like Valks or wizards or giants or something, because giants can tank if there's like Valks. So um, that's a good way to screw up a queen walk and yeah, make them have to pop the ability, make it harder than just dropping down the poison and taking out your CC troops. Uh, but the golem balloon still works because it um, takes up time on a queen walk and it definitely can do some damage to Valks or Boulders if they, uh, if, if you get lucky, I guess. It's kind of a, um, a roll of the dice if you bring the uh, Golem Balloon, but can work as well. So anyway, that is basically the video. I think I've covered everything I wanted to talk about, but uh, good luck with your base if you're a Town Hall 10 building a base. Um, but this is just the basics. I also have Town Hall 9 basics. A little bit of an older video. I'm thinking about making a newer one but definitely a lot of concepts that still apply. So check that out if you're a Town Hall 9. And uh, like I said, I have my live base builds, other miscellaneous uh, defensive videos. Check out my playlists uh, for more on what kind of defensive stuff you can do at Town Hall 10, Town Hall 9, even a few Town Hall 8s, I think, in there, um, but not quite Town Hall 11s. But a lot of the Town Hall 10 stuff applies to Town Hall 11. So this video um, is also helpful at Town Hall 11s because it's a pretty similar defensive game up at Town Hall 11 as it is at Town Hall 10. So anyway, um, that's that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave a comment telling me what else I forgot, if I'm wrong about stuff, anything you want to say, I'll take a look at it, because um, the more people that are, are in this conversation, the better uh, the quality will be and the better kind of basis that can be made. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye, Sector Toronto.